Well, hello, you two buds. I hope you're doing well. I am going to show you the first part of the next portrait that I'm working on. Now, this gentleman here, uh, this is my third attempt at this face. And um, I'm going to give you a few pointers at this level and stage and what I've learned at this point. And you can see, for comparison, I'll put up the uh, photo here. Lots of contrast in the photo. but And so that you need to see the values and um, get the lights in and choose where the lights are the most white and keep them white. To show this glimmer on the eyeglasses, there is no color there. So the color is before it and after it. This knob here where the arm sits on the glasses, which this arm disappears under the hair in the darkness here, but that shows up as a glint of light in the photo. You capture that by keeping that pure white. And then where are your medium levels of value, such as here? and here versus dark dark this is not a mustache but it's a sh shadow area like a medium shadow created by the shape of his mouth actually your eyes are always going to be in the center of the head all right that gets you started and then how tilted is the head and to form that T, the glasses, thankfully I didn't have too much trouble getting the glasses on there. That was one of the challenges of this portrait, was to pick this guy with these glasses that have an orange tint. And can I make the skin show through the orange a little bit? The purple was showing up under in his eyes. I kept the purple. The tawny brown, which is sort of a reddish brown on top of it, tones it down and makes it a brownish purple. One of my earlier drafts, the eyes got very muddy from too much erasing and trying to make adjustments. And if when you get too far with that, you can you cannot add any more color or fix it. The distance from here to this point is actually more than one nose length when I, I kind of count it from here to this point. You can see it's like a nose and a half. That helps me to get the vertical. And then in this earlier draft, this is the second one. I learned an important lesson that my drawing needs to be more careful. It needs to be almost final. This was is a much more orangey version. This would have been acceptable if the eyes weren't damaged by this going over and then the heavy black lines, I kind of gave up at that point. The space between this corner here and this corner starting over here is often one exact eye length. All right. I knew something wasn't right with the ears. I have them starting this ear half, a, half an eye over. See? One eye, half an eye. Well, then I looked at the phone like, wait, his, his ear starts more over here, like a whole eye length over. face ended too quickly in other words it ended too quick but to go horizontal with a face i can take that eye and and realize well how many eyeballs lengths is his mouth it's really two here's one two from here to here it's two eyeballs in the original i had one eyeball basically this point to this point little pouty mouth the ears look huge. It actually is true that this ear is, you're look, you have more side of the head happening over here than on this side. So you're going to have the ear be like up. And I realized moving it over gave me the larger ear that he needed. Uh, I wanted this a little less detailed and I became symbolic with this Adam's apple area instead of photorealistic. I wanted the most detail to be here and a bit less here. 
I've already mentioned the purple that you can see um, because of his sunglasses right at his eyes. And um, I thought that looked really neat. And I decided to make a theme of that really. I looked for the other purple that you could see within the sunglasses area. Then I noticed there's a little bit on his ear. His lips, instead of being pink, there's in the very center there's a little watermelon color. But really the lips, where you can see some color, is really the same light purple with the same medium brown on top of it. I decided to leave it unfinished. Um, and I'm going to put in some pointers besides talking about this drawing. Um, real basic stuff. When you pick a paper, you want it to be acid free. That's important so it doesn't yellow over time and get damaged just by aging. Um, it'll stay white. So you want to look for that. But what I discovered is that it matters on which side you draw the drawing with colored pencil. And so the way it is from you, if facing you, the pad, you want to draw on that surface facing you. You could attempt the other side depending on the paper, but my experience is it didn't work as well with colored pencil. It's, oh, it's technically good for what I did, but I did not want to finish it and keep struggling with my colored pencils on the wrong side of the paper. The surface of the paper is behaving differently and I cannot put multiple layers of colored pencil on top or blend them as well as on the other side. It was unforgiving with erasing in this area where I needed to remove something. And so, and so the paper was getting actually damaged by adding the colored pencil in this area in particular. And I could tell, well, in any minute, my pencil's gonna go through the paper. This is how I decided to finish this unfinished drawing, which was to look at the lines I had drawn in very faint pencil and go over them again with a regular weight of the pencil and make them dark lines. And so um, I can take this drawing and show it to others and I'm going to put it in a presentation book to show the skills I can do because the face did turn out really well. I liked the, the face and I'm going to show it that way. I'm doing a full face portrait next. Instead of this big, it's going to be this big. That'll be something I have not been doing and I wanted to have a practice drawing of that exercise. It's my next self-challenge in doing the art. Alright, so that's a good little update and I hope you're doing well and I will talk to you in the next one. Alright, bye.